Fox Sports. We are the Fox. We are the Lions. The Indians have quietly won nine of their last 13. And now they have a chance to climb four games over 500 for the first time this season. The drive also starts a stretch 19 out of 20 games inside the Central Division beginning tonight in Chicago. The White Sox have been struggling, but they'll feature some right-handed power bats against left-hander T.J. House next on Sports Time Ohio. away from September but the stretch run begins tonight for the Cleveland Indians on the south side of Chicago. It's game one of a three game series between the Indians and the White Sox. Hi again everyone Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. Tribe comes into tonight's game playing pretty good baseball. Third time this year they've won nine out of 13 and yet Rick they're doing it not with offense but they're doing it with sensational starting pitching. Well, they are fitting off each other right now, and they have been on a nice roll over the last 13 games. As a matter of fact, an ERA of just 171. They haven't given up a lot of hits. They're not walking batters, and they're striking out a lot of guys. And it's been fun because if, if this offense can pick, pick it up and give this uh, pitching staff a little bit of help, that's when they can get out and go out and run. T.J. House's turn tonight. He's two and three this year. And, uh, you know, Wednesday against the Twins, five and a third innings. He's usually between a five and six inning pitcher. But Jose Quintana is six and ten this year, but he's three and oh in his career against the Cleveland Indians and a left-hander on the road. Again, that's the problem for the Indians. Left-handed starters have been problematic for them this year. We'll see if they can turn that around here tonight in the series opener. When we come back, where have all the right-handed power bats gone? Or have they gone anywhere at all? We'll discuss the issue when we come back. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Buy your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. 
by Panini's. Get overstuffed at Panini's Bar and Grill. And by Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. Well, welcome back inside U.S. Cellular Field in downtown Chicago. You know, the White Sox did something this offseason that made noise. They brought in big right-handed bat Jose Abreu. They definitely added some splash to that lineup, but recently they just got back, obviously, at Sayil Garcia. And now they have something that most teams don't have, two legit right-handed power bats as we bring in both Matt Underwood and Rick Manning upstairs. Guys, why is that a rarity, and what kind of difference does it make to have bats like these in your lineup? Well, well, that's a good question, Katie, and I think what you have to really consider is are the right-handed bats really a dying breed? Because if you go back and look at it, in the last 10 years, the batting champs in the National League, seven out of the 10 were right-handed hitters. In the American League, 50-50. Last 10 years in the home run champion category, eight out of 10 in the National League right-handed bats, seven out of the 10 in the American League right-handed bats. So while there may not be a plethora of right-handed power, right. The ones who are here are really good. Yeah, and, and we just showed you a graphic with the home run lead. There's only two left-handers on that in all of baseball. The rest of them are right-handed hitters. And I'll tell you what, the Indians would die to have a right-handed hitter in the middle part of that lineup that could hit with some power like an Abreu guy. If you look last year, uh, you know, it, you just don't have that pop, I mean, from the right side of the plate consistently. Of course, Santana hits is the switch hitter, but he's not the guy in the middle part of that lineup that drives in runs from the right side. I think the bottom line to all this, if you don't have one, it's very glaring. Yes, it is, especially when you're facing left-handers a lot, and, and the Indians are facing a left-hander tonight. That's the matchup tonight. Jose Quintana, the left-hander, against T.J. House, the Tribe Southpaw. All the play-by-play -play between Cleveland and Chicago coming up next. by your Northern Ohio Honda dealers by the Cleveland Clinic call today for an appointment today and by the Northeast Ohio Ford dealers and we welcome you in to US Cellular Field here in Chicago it will be a beautiful night we are looking at a game time temperature of 71 degrees and I know for those of you back in Northeastern Ohio you're saying what <laughs> because it was a sweltering day back in Cleveland. 
And I guess uh, some heavy storms just blew through the area as well. But here in Chicago, perfect weather, perfect night, and we're ready to go as Jose Quintana winds it up. And his first pitch to Michael Bourne is right down the middle. Bourne fouls it back, no balls, two strikes. Told you the Indians have won nine of their last 13. Chicago has dropped a season high six in a row and 13 of their last 17 overall. They've dropped a season high 12 games under 500. Breaking ball fouled away. Yeah, the White Sox in a stretch where they are playing 23 straight games against teams above the 500 mark. Yeah, and they have struggled. They're already four and 11 yeah, to start that stretch. Exactly. One ball and two strikes to count on Michael Bourne, Robin Ventura's club. You know, we talked about it earlier in the year when we faced Chicago. Injuries aside, they're a team in transition. They've got some aging players. They're not sure. They didn't want to just dump and start all over again. One two pitch to Bourne. But that sometimes is the toughest spot to be in where you're not really. A true contender, but you're not really in a in a complete rebuild or retool or whatever you want to call it. You know, they're carrying big contracts like Adam Dunn. Paul right. Kinnert goes back for another year, but he's in a. A farewell season. Bourne shoots it out of play. But they have some nice pieces too, where they just signed Abreu this year, Jose Abreu, and the guy uh, Avisel Garcia, who they traded for late last year from Detroit. He's back. He missed uh, most of the year. He wasn't even supposed to play the rest of the year, and he's back. Yeah. There's Garcia, the right fielder. 2 2 to Bourne, line down the left field line, could be trouble if it's fair, and it is a fair ball. And it shoots up into the crowd for a double. So Bourne is aboard, and here comes. Well, it looked, like, looked like it was Mark Parent in the dugout who was going maybe to hit the phone and see what the video replay guy had to say. Well, because the umpire sort of decoyed him, I, I think he was going to say foul to begin with, and then all of a sudden he says fair. He turned, he changed his mind. It looked like it hit right on right the chalk, didn't it? It did, and then bounced in. Watch his uh, the umpire if you can. May not get a chance to see him, but. You know, it was a fair ball. It hit the chalk. You saw Mike Sawbar say fair ball. So it was right on the line. So Michael Bourne with a leadoff double is 11. So the Indians in a good spot to open the game against Jose Quintana, who has been very tough on them this year and throughout his career. Jose Ramirez squares, bunts it, gets it down. Quintana fires the first, and that's out number one as Sanchez came over from a second base position to take the throw. Indian starting lineup brought to you by Progressive. Michael Bourne, Jose Ramirez, and Michael Brantley. Then it's Santana, Kipnis, and Avilas. Zach Walters, Tyler Holt, and Roberto Perez round it out. GMC starting pitcher Jose Quintana, 25-year-old, making his 27th start. This will be his third start against the Indians this year. He had a no decision in his first start and a win in his second start. And as a matter of fact, that win came on May 26th. That was the last time he has had a win here at home covering six starts after that. So his last win came May 26th here against the Indians. Michael Brantley takes a strike. Brantley trying to get that run home from third with one out here in the first inning. He's hit 347 on the year with runners in scoring position. Spun him out of the way and it hit him, didn't it? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know how it missed him. But it did. See that ball running inside and just a piece. You could see it. 
So now they will have runners at first and third. And Carlos Santana to the plate. Santana with 21 homers and 60 runs driven in. But here in the month of August, batting just 197. He put together back to back solid months offensively. He hit 308 in June, 313 in July. But here in August, he's fallen back the other way. Well, a great opportunity to give your team the lead. Starting this first game of the road trip. Found right back. Well, you think back, Rick, to the uh, series opener against Baltimore when Santana hit a three run homer in the first inning. Yeah, after the first two walked. I remember that. As a matter of fact, it sent Ubaldo to the bullpen after that start. Yeah, it sure did. Not going to do it to this guy because this guy really his record is six and ten, but he has pitched much better than his record uh, indicates. Ten no decisions this year. He had a franchise record seventeen no decisions in 2013, and they just uh, have a tendency they don't score a lot with him when he's out on the mound. Driven to deep left field. Viciedo running out of real estate hits the base of the wall. Cam's by him. Scoring on the play is born. Brantley stops at third. It's an RBI double for Carlos Santana. And the Indians will play from in front tonight as they take a one to nothing lead. Santana's 21st double of the year. RBI number 61. How was that for an 0 2 pitch? BR McDonald's not loving it. He gave it a ride. Boy, right there. That was a bad pitch. He. I don't know if that might have been a cutter. He's trying to throw inside. This is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. Going off the wall. You see, he did not try to pull the pitch. He just happened to get it on the inside part of the plate where he's able to turn on it, drive in the first run, move runners up to second and third. Now it gives Jason Kipnis an opportunity. Breaking ball in for a strike. Kipnis has picked up a hit in 22 of his 24 career games here in Chicago. A 382 batting average. He's always loved hitting here in this town, in this park. Grew up in nearby Northbrook. Another off speed pitch, that one at the top of the zone. And he's in the hole 0 2. But he's in a great spot here with runners at second and third, so it becomes a matter of put the ball in play now for Kipnis. And you know, Quintana's going to try to expand his strike zone. Wouldn't chase one and two. Should have tried it with Santana up there. Same count, left one middle in. He was able to turn on. Now, one thing Quintana, Quintana has not done is give up many home runs. No, he keeps it in the yard. Only seven allowed in 160 plus innings. There's Round a ball run. that'll get the run home from third. Sanchez throws out Kipnis two down. Jason gets RBI number 39. Two nothing Indians. There you go. Let's take a look at the uh, Kia White Sox defense behind Quintana tonight. Viciedo is in left. Eaton. Making his uh, coming off the DL start in center. Garcia is in right. Gillespie at third. Ramirez at short. Sanchez is at second. Abreu at first with Flowers doing the catch. Mike Avilas with a runner at third and two down. Downstairs, two balls, no strikes. And 
The Indians this year just one and six in this ballpark. But boy, this is the way to start it out here. Starting this three game series. Get the lead early. And this might bloop out. in. Garcia won't get to it. Avila's with a two out RBI bloop single. Three to nothing, Cleveland. RBI number 32 for Avila's. There you go. Two out base hit. Doesn't matter how it comes. Get it. Now they can relax a little bit. That ball gets inside. Avila slices it. And it gets in front of Garcia. It'll drop. A nice two out RBI right there. It's a three nothing Indians lead. I'm not saying he could have, but you wonder a player coming back from the shoulder injury right. that he occurred, that he sustained earlier this year. Do you, is that in the back of your mind on plays like that? Definitely believe it is. Uh, yes. First inning of a game, something like that, yeah. I mean, he wasn't supposed to play the rest of the year, and he's back. I mean, so you'll see it. It wasn't hit very hard. And I don't know that he could have caught it That's anyway. Smart. No, I don't think he could have, but uh, yes, I think it certainly could be in the back of your mind. That's how he got hurt diving for a ball, yeah. and he separated that shoulder coming in in this ballpark earlier in the year. So it certainly does have an impact, I would think. Zach Walters. Takes a pitch outside one and one all that hard work you have to fight to get back to get out there. Uh, absolutely. You think twice before doing it especially this year. This might seem like a silly question but. It's right up my alley. <laughs> There's no such thing as a silly question. Is that something you practice? Can you work on how to dive for a baseball? I don't think so. No, it's just instinct. It's just reaction. It's just the ball being hit there. A coach is not going to hit your fungos. It's going to send you to diving for balls. No. You can't. You can't work on that. So if you're Robin Ventura and you're the general manager, Rick Hahn, you just say you just hope he don't, doesn't dive. Don't dive. Stay in the game. You're more important to us being on the field than off the field. Besides, he can come up and hit a home run or add something. And, and you know what? That's it's a first inning. Now, I'm sure they don't want him to die. Albert Bell was a heck of an outfielder. I don't remember him diving too many times. If you come sliding, it's different. You know, uh, right. if you come in and, and you try and make a slide with your knees or feet first, but not head first. Point being, you can be effective and and not risk life and limb. I guess. Yes. Keep everything in front of you, hit your cutoff man, do all the fundamentals right. Absolutely. Well, Zach Walters was 0 1 to start the at bat, but now he's sitting in a pretty good spot here with Mike Avilas at first base. And two down here in the opening frame. Full count. If Walters gets aboard, Tyler Holt. Would be next. Mike Avilas, meanwhile, will be in motion on this 3 2 pitch from Jose Quintana. And that's chop foul. There's Tyler Holt, who's put up very good numbers in his first go round with the Indians. Quintana with his 27th pitch of the first inning. Oh. And a sky high chopper. Astro Abreu will have to turn and flip. And Walters beats it out at first to keep the inning alive. <laughs> That's a turf hit right there. I knew as soon as it went off uh, the dirt up there, it's going to be hard to get him at first base. Because Abreu had to almost turn his back to the plate and go back. And by the time he catches it, Quintana's got to get over there. They got to flip it. And he beats it out. The ball just out in front of yeah. home plate. And the race is on. But boy, it's almost like it, there was a spring in that baseball. It took off. Here comes the flip, and he beats him. It he was sure close, did. but he beat it. There's a good look. Gets Quintana did a nice job getting to the bag. And that was really a lot closer than I thought. I didn't think it was that close, but that, that replay right there, yeah. really close. Well, the bottom line to all that is that Jose Quintana will have to throw more pitches to get out of the inning. There you go. He's over there in time, but the flip. 
He grabbed that with his bare hand, didn't he? Oh, he sure did. You know what? It didn't go into the glove. I thought it went into the glove. It didn't. It was a barehanded play. Huh. Here's Tyler Holt. And he takes a strike. Our friends at Stats Inc. sent us a doozy today, Rick. Uh oh. Last five Indians in their first 10 career games to bat 400 or better with a minimum of 22 plate appearances. Tyler Holtz sitting right at 400. The last guy to do it was Alex Cole. Hit 424 in his first 10 games. Before that, Andy Allenson in 1986 hit 457. And the guy before that, your man Dwayne Kuyper, who hit 500 in his first 10 career games. And he never cooled off since. <laughs> He's still batting <laughs> He's still, 500. Yes, he is. <laughs> no kidding. How about that, huh? Well, Holt has done a nice job, not only offensively, he's done a very good job defensively since being here, making some diving plays in right field, in center field. Downstairs. Rick, I don't remember in any of the games we've seen Jose Quintana pitch against the Indians, him struggling in an inning like this. I agree, because I was, you're right, he's usually really brisk. He doesn't uh, throw many balls, but this is what, a 30 pitch inning? Yeah. And uh, yes, I agree with you. He hasn't struggled like this. His two starts this year, he went six innings both times, gave up five hits both times, one run the first time, two runs the second. Hold is run up to end the inning, but not before 32 pitches are made by Quintana. The Indians make him pay. They cash in for a three spot. Now the White Sox are coming to bat. Sox starting lineup for Robin Ventura brought to you by Toyota. Adam Eaton off the disabled list and right back into the starting lineup at the top. Then it's Alexei Ramirez followed by the big basher Jose Abreu. Obviously, Aiel Garcia will bat clean up. Then it's Paul Canerco, Connor Gillespie, Diane Viciedo, and Tyler Flowers followed by the switch hitting Carlos Sanchez. GMC starting pitcher. T.J. House coming uh, off a start his first career road win. Came in Minnesota in his last start five and a third four hits did not allow a run. Uh, in that ball game. The bullpen closed it out for him. So that was his first road win. It was very nice. See if he can add to it. They give him three runs early here. He did make a start against Chicago earlier that came May 28th here six and a third five hits just one run. And a no decision. He left leading in that game one nothing. Adam Eaton takes a strike. Eaton was on the disabled list. 
since August the 9th with a strained oblique. And Chicago lost nine out of 13 while he was gone. Yeah, he's uh, he makes a difference to this uh, lineup offensively. Right back to TJ House and the left hander throws him out one away. Let's check out the Kia Indians defense. It looks like this Brantley is in left board at center Holt is in right. Avila's at third Ramirez at short Kipnis is at second Santana at first with Perez behind the plate. All right the umpires tonight Joe West behind the plate. he's the crew chief. Rob Drake is at first base. Alan Porter is actually down at second base and Gabe Morales is at third. Yeah there's some confusion because they had a late change they changed the rotation of the umpires. But uh, the old cowboy back there behind the plate tonight. Alexei Ramirez batting 285 on the year, a dozen diggers, 60 driven in. Rick, this guy has quietly become one of the real consistent players in the American League. I'll tell you, he's an underrated shortstop. He's had a terrific year, and he started off the year when he hit in his first 18 games, I believe. He was uh, oh yeah, right. and, and he's just never stopped, man. He, he's a good player. He plays every day. I mean, he, he's he quietly goes about his business and he just performs every day. But if we weren't here right now and you and I were sitting around and said, "Who are your top shortstops?" He probably wouldn't be at the top of our list no. because you, you forget even, about him. You may not even name him. Yeah. Sort of like the guy in Kansas City, Alcides Escobar. Escobar, yeah. right. Well, everybody, I would assume around baseball knows this guy's name by now, Jose Abreu. Well, they if they don't, they will. 33 home runs, 94 runs batted in, and we still have a month to go. Well, you talk about settling a lineup down and making everybody else in it better. What a year he is at. He spent some time on the disabled list, missed 15 games this year. But boy, when you look at him, second in homers, first in ribbies, slugging percentage. But Abreu coming from Cuba, like a lot of young minor league players that come up through various systems, has to learn that the baseball season at the big league levels a little yeah. bit longer than anything he's been used to. No question. And that's something you have to get used to, and he will. You know, this is going to be a good test for him. This year he's driven in three or more runs in a game 14 times. He's posted hitting streaks of 18 and 21 games throughout the course of the year and had a 25 game road hitting streak. And he has hurt the Indians this year. Oh yes maybe. No it's his first base umpire. Rob Drake said he didn't go around. Mm, that was really borderline. Uh, that's what I thought. That's exactly what I thought. It was close. Abreu with five homers against the Indians this year and seven RBIs. To left field. Over Brantley's head. One hops the fence. Around third, Alexi Ramirez will be held there. Ramirez put the brakes on when Jose Ramirez gathered in the throw from Brantley, and he made a good, strong relay to the dish. But now back comes Chicago, second and third with one out. His 30th double. Watch the extension he gets here. Out front, down and away, which was a really good yeah. pitch, you think, yeah. until you give this guy swinging room. He's an excellent breaking ball hitter. And I'll tell you, you just give him a, a chance and he can rake it and they hold, hold him up. You've got Garcia, another right hander coming up. So now the White Sox are going to have an opportunity to come back and score in the first. That ball was smoked and it didn't look like a bad pitch. No, I mean, you, when on the replay, you really see it's off the plate. It's yep. away. And it's down. Well, here's Avi Saeel Garcia with second and third and one out. Chops it up the middle, it's through, and the White Sox get two right back. 
Three to two ball game as Garcia drives in a pair. Drove it right back up the middle. Well, that didn't take long to respond. And he didn't waste any time. It wasn't it all that hard. Just plays beautifully. Three straight hits. And that ball had too much of the plate. Right handers are hitting 315 coming into this game off of TJ House. And it doesn't get any easier because now you're facing a veteran. So they come right back and put a pair on the board. Paul Canerco in his 18th and final season. White Sox designated hitter. He's hit five home runs this year, but 439 on his career. One ball, one strike. Yeah, and 48 of those coming against the Indians. Yeah. There you go, 48 of them. He hasn't messed around 177 RBIs to go with those 48 homers. A great list that we show every time we come to Chicago, and he happens to be around. Plays another 20 years, he might catch Babe Ruth. <laughs> well, he'll be playing him in Arizona somewhere. Bounce to third, Avilas goes to second for one, on to first. Santana applies the tag and the inning is over on the double play. But Chicago gets two right back. 3-2 Cleveland after one in Chicago. The all new Sunnyside Chevrolet in Illyria. Sunny will save you money. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin furniture and freestanding locations. And by Kia. Visit mykiacleveland.com to learn more. Roberto Perez and TJ House talk it over along with pitching coach Mickey Calloway. A couple of runs scored by the White Sox. Now the Indians will go back to work offensively. Roberto Perez, the only member of the starting lineup that did not get to bat in that first inning. Fastball strike over the outside corner. Last year, it's been well documented, the Indians simply dominated the White Sox in the season series, going 17 and 2. This year, Quite a turnaround, though. The White Sox have gone eight and five against Cleveland, and they've won five out of six here in Chicago. Yeah, and both teams have scored 58 runs coming into the night. Cleveland had a couple blowouts earlier. They had a couple of 12-run games. Well, their their only win here in Chicago was a 12-6 victory. Uh huh. And they also beat the Sox 12-5 back in Cleveland.
We'll see if those two runs do anything for Quintana as far as settling down. Perez trying to bloop one in. Garcia on the run pulls it down, one away. Keys to the game are brought to you by Wayside Furniture. And it will be key to see how TJ House does over the course of the game against the Sox right handed power bats. And the long ball is usually a factor here at U.S. Cellular Field. This park yields a lot of home runs. Normally the White Sox are among the league leaders in home runs because of that. Michael Bourne takes a strike. This year though Chicago. Kind of middle of the pack when home runs with 126. Indians are right behind him at 123. Baltimore leads the way 106. Yeah, that mean they're not even close. I don't think what 20 ahead of anybody else. Well, the second the, closest. And then the yeah, the Astros. The Astros are yeah. right there with uh, Toronto tied with 144 behind them. Okay, so they've got a 20 homer lead. Yeah. But this Chicago team has always been a team that uh, they live by the long ball and have in the past. Good starting pitching and some long ball. Two balls, two strikes. And the count is full. Michael Bourne had a great at bat his first time up, and that double hit the line. Got him started off right. That's what we were talking about offensively when you can get this guy going as, the, as your leadoff guy. He makes things happen, believe it or not. Ball four. So Bourne doubled and scored in the first. He walks with one out here in the second. Here's the tail of the tape. And as Rick said, I mean, it's pretty even. Statistically, yeah. except mean, for the fact the Sox have three more victories. Yeah, they, they've won the low scoring games. They've been they've held uh, the Indians in nine of the 13 game three runs or less. The Indians are two and seven in those nine games. So. Got him. Borney on his way to second, but the throw is in time, and he is erased. He'll be caught stealing. He's going on first movement, trying to make something happen with one out. He's just going to sit there, and uh, I'll tell you, they did a nice job to throw over there. He was just going to nonchalantly take off on first movement, but the pickoff, one, three, six. Caught stealing for the fifth time this year. Jose Ramirez takes a strike. The plate, two balls and a strike. Swung right through a high fastball, two and two. On the line. This is a long run for Garcia. Will he get there? He won't. It short hops the fence. Ramirez into second. He'll put the brakes on there. 
with a two out double. That win carried the ball right down the line. And I'll tell you, I thought it was going to go into the seats. And it pushed it back and it got over Garcia's head. But he was playing pretty shallow. And it just missed getting out of here by another couple of feet, maybe. Look at he sliced that ball down the line. Now Garcia's going back, and then he realized it's coming back. It keeps going. And it short hops the wall out there. So Ramirez with a two out double. Third double already for the Indians. Another RBI chance for Michael Brantley. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning with a runner at third base. Up high for ball one. They have as many hits now in this game as they have in his first two starts. They had five in both his starts prior to this. They already have five, three of them doubles. Called a strike that was generous, and it's one and one. Take another look that looked outside on our Nissan pitch tracker. I'd say, wouldn't you mm -hmm. talk about generous? Joe may have to go out and sink somewhere tonight. That was downright charitable. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Well, if he calls it early in the at bat as a pitcher, you, you'd be stupid not, not to, go, to back, go right back. Go out back there. out yeah. there because as a hitter, you're going to be forced to swing at that, especially when you're down in the count one two. You can't take it again, even though you believe or you know it's not a strike. If he's going to call it, this is a veteran umpire, and that's his strike zone. You better swing. To left field, down the line, Viciedo onto the track, can't make the play, it's a fair ball. Scoring is Ramirez, Brantley to second base with an RBI double for two Indians. Boy, they're, they're going line to line here today. You're not a kidding. Bourne hits the chalk, Ramirez hits the, the short hops the wall, Brantley comes down the other way, another double, another two out base hit. They're making Garcia and Viciedo work here tonight. Put on the track shoes, boys. Yeah, this one's slicing away. This Seattle did everything in his power to get over there, but he wasn't going to catch up. That's a tough play on the backhanded side, knowing you're getting close to the seats. I agree with you 100%, but boy, there have been a lot of people in Chicago talking about the lack of corner outfield defense, and he gets all the fingers pointed at oh, him. Oh, I know it. I know it. Tank, he's, uh, he's not blessed being one of your better defenders. Usually they have Diaz out there, the left-hander out, so they've got the right-hand bat in there. And when Garcia was hurt, Diaz was in left, right. and Viciedo was over in right field. One-zero -oh pitch. Santana takes downstairs. But they have gone line to line so far here in the first two innings. This could be one of those games we may be here all night with all the offense that's going to been going on. Already nine hits in the game. We're in the top of the second. Strike to the outside corner, and it's two and one. And what looked like maybe a chance for a quick inning for Jose Quintana is now escalating. In a hurry. This will be pitch number 55. I think it's the 24th of the inning. What was he at 31 in the first inning? I believe so, yes. That's how quickly for a pitcher. You two outs, nobody on base. You're thinking I'm gonna be out of here with the next next thing you know. You're, you're it's another 20 plus inning. But Santana waves at an off speed pitch and strikes out to end the inning. But the Indians keep the pressure on. 
back to back two out doubles. Makes it 4 2, believe it. Bottom of the second inning. And for the White Sox, it will be Connor Gillespie, Diane Viciato, and Tyler Flowers. Gillespie's had a terrific year and especially so against the yeah, Indians. He's always hit the Indians since he was picked up uh, from the White Sox from the Giants. He's only hitting 455 this year, 15 for 33. So we're going to miss. He's among the top 10 hitters. The White Sox have three of the top 10 batting averages in the American League this year. Yeah. Gillespie's one of them. Jose Abreu is also among the league leaders in batting average. Eaton is up there as well. Isn't he? Is that the guy I'm forgetting? I think so. Yeah, yeah Eaton is the third. Uh -huh. They're eight, nine, and ten respectively. Last time the White Sox had multiple players among the top ten was uh, back when Frank Thomas and Lance Johnson ranked among the top ten. Gillespie bangs a single through the right side of the infield. Right back comes Chicago. It might be one of those nights. I, I told you, I heard he sensed it. Ten hits already. There's a fastball that stayed middle in, and he's able to just get enough of it, get it through the hole. That's the White Sox fourth hit already. I pop foul out of play. Takes a strike. Two strikes. You know, 
one of the hard things to figure out about the White Sox this year, I'm sure their GM Rick Hahn is scratching his head over this one. When they play teams with winning records, uh -huh. they're right about 500, 34 and 36. But the teams below 500, they're 25 and 35. Nope. You would think it would be the opposite of that, where they've kind of held their own against the well, bad teams. You and would expect that. Took their lumps against the yeah. good teams. You would expect that. Hold your own. And Almost then. as if they've played to the level of their competition. True. But it all comes down to pitching. You know, when, when it's all said and done, Chris Sale, he's been having a tough time getting wins, and with his stuff, he should never have a tough time. It's just been uh, one of those years. They started out, they were probably one of the worst teams in the league offensively last year, but they've been much better this year. And he is one of the best. We'll miss him again in this series. TJ keeps trying to get him to go after that pitch, but he won't do it. See what he has for him on a 3 2 pitch. He did that time. <laughs> he kept going in there. A little different when you go to 3 2. You don't want to walk. That's either stubborn or patience. I'm not sure which. <laughs> it's right there. It's. No, that was patience. 3 2. He stayed right with that pitch and they went right back in there. He laid off the two before that. He couldn't lay off the 3 2. Stat of the game brought to you by Buick. How about this? The fact that the Indians ERA has plunged to 242. That's really impressive for this late in the year to get those kind of results, especially when you've got the kind of young pitchers that the Indians have, not a bunch of veterans with experience to draw. Kipnis to Ramirez for one back to first. Double play ends the inning. So TJ House gives up a leadoff single, but gets the two for one ball to get out of the inning. To complete from Chicago, the Indians four and the White Sox two. Well, MLB.TV celebrates its 12th anniversary. You can get MLB.TV today for only $12 for the remainder of the season. Visit MLB TV today. Four two Cleveland. Third inning. Jason Kipnis will lead it off. RBI ground out his first time up. Line drive single to center field. And the Indians get their leadoff man aboard for the second time in three innings.
Avila's squared but pulled the bat back and took a strike. Pretty good numbers. I'm not sure. Why do you want to bunt then? Yeah. You got a two run lead. You got a chance to get him out of here. Guy that's pitched really, he's 3 0 in his career against the Indians. Well, make him earn every out the way it's going right now. I agree. One and one. Maybe he was just trying to bring the infield in a little bit. Throw to first. Kip is back. He has 19 stolen bases on the year. Funny thing about numbers and statistics sometimes in baseball. We know the Indians have struggled against left handed starters this year. We've yes, seen it. Especially on the road. But yeah, on the road, they're 5 and 16 against left handed starters. Right. But overall this year, their record 17 and 20. Uh huh. They played better against them in the second half. 7 and 4 since July the 1st. He's trying to do the same thing he did his first at bat. Didn't get quite enough of it this time. One away. Don't forget to tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have your picture shown during our telecast. It's all courtesy of AT and T. Zach Walters an infield hit his first time up. He bounced one right out in front of the plate and it kangaroo hopped over the head of first baseman Jose Abreu who had to go back make the catch and then spin around and try to flip it to the pitcher covering but he couldn't do it quickly enough. Al Walter swings and pops it up. Center field. Two down. This was the play in the first. Look at that. You won't see one hit any higher off no, the ground. It looked like it's a rock card infielder on turf. It was bang bang at first base. Quintana made a nice play going to the bare hand. But he did. Uh, it was close. Beat it out. Tyler Holt called out on strikes to end the first inning. We'll bat here. Michael Bourne was thrown out trying to steal in the first inning. He took off on first movement. Quintana threw to first and they threw down to get him with two outs. I'm not sure, Kipnis, unless he's got a really good read on Quintana, I'm not sure he'll try here. No, no, no reason to go yet. You know, it, most of the times you don't get reads. By the guess. time you pick something up against a left-handed pitcher, it's too late. You know, you're going to get a terrible jump. Flowers is a decent arm back there, can throw the baseball, so you don't want to make outs on the bases either. Just give them away. Sometimes there's left handers you can pick up and he doesn't have a good move. But uh, a lot of times now uh, the, the one thing they do at the major league level they do control the running game pretty well. Nowadays from both righties and lefties. And if you don't have a good move as a left hand you can always go to that slide step. And at least give your catcher an opportunity if you want to run. Is that why we're not seeing guys steal 70 bases a year like they were at one time? I think more so, yes. Yeah. They're paying attention, they're changing their patterns more. Yeah. It's called from the bench throw over, step off, hold the ball. One ball and two strikes. A 
another close pitch. But it just misses and now we're even up at two balls two strikes. With two down here in the third. Jose Quintana is already at 66 pitches yeah. on the night. Runner goes. And it's fouled. He had a great jump, too. Yes, he did. Finally had one. But with two strikes, as a hitter, you have to protect. There's not, you, you can't give him a chance. There you go. He finally he took off. Had a good jump, but you can't do anything about it. Again, Kipnis is on the move, but Holt strikes out. The inning is over. Jose Quintana has ended all three innings with a strikeout, but he trails four to two. Well, as you enjoy a cold one tonight, stay tuned later in the game for Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Bottom of the third in Chicago. Tribe leads it four to two, and the batter to lead it off will be Carlos Sanchez. Sanchez takes over at second base for Chicago after they dealt Gordon Beckham recently to the Angels. Of course, Beckham was playing some third base over there. With the Angels, and that's what they're looking for some help. When he came up with the White Sox as the number one draft pick, he played third base. He just never, at least here in Chicago, never panned out, never lived up to, I think, what they thought uh, well, the right. type of player he was going to be. Defensively, I don't think they ever really had any issues no. with his play. I... But the bat just never quite played to the level they anticipated. Your number one pick. A lot of times that pressure is put on you. You know they expect big things. You know, and he got off in his. I remember his rookie year. He was swinging the bat really well, and then okay, now they expect more and more, and it just, as you say, didn't come. And there's no telling what this White Sox club will look like next year. 
you know the one thing that they, they've never been shy about dipping into the free agent market in the offseason so well you're going to lose the salary of uh, Adam Dunn he'll be his contract will be done Canerco will be retired not that he's making a lot this year because you know he just wanted to come back right. one more year um, so they'll have some money to to spend you would think Yeah, Paul Canarco's had a very distinguished career. Boy, oh boy, he was. We talked about right-handed hitters in our open. He was a good one for a long time. Ramirez cuts it off up the middle, throws out Sanchez with a terrific play and a good stretch by Carlos Santana, one away. Adam Eaton comes to the plate here in the third inning. Let's bring in Katie with him. What does his return to the lineup mean for Chicago? Well, Matt, he has a different kind of presence. He's been described to me as kind of like a pesky hitter who has the ability to just wear pitchers down. Each at bat that he has is at least seven or eight pitches, ensuring that he almost sees all of the starters pitches that day. But the key today, they said the tribe staff has to be more selective deep in the count and stay out of his hot zone middle in. Well, Adam Eaton, the pride of Miami University down in Oxford, Ohio, a school that also had the uh, honor of hosting Court Berry Trip at one time. He attended the school. I'm not sure he graduated. But yeah. he the <laughs> well, he's listening. I'm sure he will text you here and let you know if he did or not. With honors. <laughs> Yeah, he coming back. He had the right oblique strain. And anytime you come back, I don't care if you miss two weeks, it's just not the same. You know, you miss a little extended period of time, and it takes a little while to get back into the flow for the most part. Big chopper to second base. Routine play for Jason Kipnis. A little bit of a wide throw, but Santana hangs on, two down. Time now for a Mazda game break. Let's go back to the studios. Here's Al Pulaski. All right, thanks, Al. Two down here in the third, Alexei Ramirez lines one to center. Michael Bourne makes the catch in for the first time tonight. The White Sox go one, two, three. Indians on top, four to two.
Dollar Dog Night was on tap for Friday, September 5th. The Indians will host the Chicago White Sox back in Cleveland. Get your tickets early. Save at Indians.com. Roberto Perez, Michael Bourne, and Jose Ramirez will bat for the Indians here in the fourth inning. We got to send along a special birthday wish tonight to a young friend of ours out there. Riley Nimi is turning 12. Oh boy, Riley. Corona, California. Riley, happy birthday, buddy. Well, well, Mom and Dad are doing good, Ed. Yeah, and out there Greeny. it's not bedtime yet, so he can stay up and watch. Oh, he, it doesn't morning. matter. He's been watching baseball his whole life. Riley, happy birthday, my friend. Good baseball player in his own right. Yes, he is. But for a moment, you're talking about it. <laughs> Rounded up the middle by Roberto Perez, and the Indians have a leadoff single here in the fourth inning. No, I was talking about Riley. Here's a pitch down in the zone, a little off speed pitch. He's able to go right back up the middle with it. Already eight hits. So the offense coming to life here tonight. Keep it rolling. Michael Bourne's had a couple of very good at bats tonight off the left hander. Bourne doubled the left right on the chalk his first time up and then walked in the second. Quickly, 0 and 2 the count. Two strike pitch. Oh, we're able to lay off a tantalizing off speed breaking ball. Here's the 0-2 pitch. It was a good uh, teaser, but Bourne not biting. Double play ball in the second. Two away here in the fourth. Injury report brought to you by the attorneys at Elk and Elk. Xander Bogarts and John Jaso both to the seven day concussion deal. Sean Doolittle costly loss to the A's bullpen. Michael Kadir, who was the batting champ in the National League a yeah. year ago. Yep. That thing has been full all year long. I was just thinking every time we show that, it's big name after big name. We've seen it all yeah. year long, and nobody has escaped. Now Texas they've been. Probably they've, they've had a list of their own debilitated the most by injuries this year. Well them and, and I remember playing we played the Diamondbacks Arizona was right behind Texas when it comes to days missed on. Mm -hmm. Disable lists. Boy you, as a as a team you just try to minimize your stay and. Hopefully you minimize the numbers that you have to utilize that list. It's not a good thing. That man spent 
most of the year on it. And as a player, it's no fun to be on it. Because when you're on it, you don't even feel part of the team. No. You're, you're there early to get your work in. You may hang around for games, and if you're if it's really serious, you may not even be around your ball club. Back to the mound. And a quick inning for the first time tonight for Jose Quintana. Middle of the fourth, 4 2, Cleveland. SportsOhio.com. Joe Reedy delves deeper into the tribe's next 30 days. Sam Amico takes a look at 10 of the biggest trades in NBA history as Kevin Love is now officially a Cavalier. And find out where the Indians place in this week's power rankings all on FoxSportsOhio.com. Jose Abreu doubled and scored in the first. Takes low and away ball one. What the Indians are starting tonight sounds like. Some sort of a weight loss challenge. <laughs> 30 games in 30 days. Well, and according to Elias, the one of the stats aficionados uh, out there, it's their longest consecutive streak of game dates since they played 41 games in 38 days back in 1968. That's a long time. And when I when that streak began, I was 11 days old. Well, you know, it's that rain out with the Angels, and they had they couldn't make it up back then. It was a possible rain the next day, so that was the only mutual off day they had. That's on September 10th. But then, that, I mean, that's what you have to do sometimes. And, yeah. You know, you normally I think you can't play more than 20 days in a row. They got to go to 30. So, and uh, they're not the only team that had to do it. Detroit just went through a spell like that where they played I think 31 and 30. There have been a lot of rainouts this year it seems yeah. like so everybody's having to deal with it but for the Indians with everything at stake and kind of fighting uphill this is a pretty tough challenge Katie with what what is 
Terry Francona say about this challenging stretch? Well, Matt, you and Rick both know that Terry Francona is a big believer in taking things one game at a time. Don't get ahead of yourself. And he said now is even more important to stick with that approach because just saying 30 games in 30 days sounds exhausting. He did say the one good thing, September just six days away, so they will have some extra bodies up here if need be. Oh, they'll, they'll have extra bodies, I guarantee you that. Yeah, with that guy, he he just he'd be satisfied the 15-man bullpen. He'd love it. And if they need it, they will have it. But it's one of those things you have to fight through. I mean, these are a lot of kids that, like we were talking about, how well they've been pitching. You know, for the most part, they're all young pitchers. Even Corey Kluber. You know, you look at Kluber, he's no veteran. There, there are a Still bunch of kids guy, in yeah. that rotation that they're they're going through this time of the year for the first time, really. I mean, being in that rotation every five days, getting after it, seeing the competition they're gonna have to face. Swing and a miss, two and two. And they're in that situation for a team that's fighting for his playoff life. Right. Day and I mean, what would we say 19 out of 20 against the uh, the Central Division? Yeah. Something that the, they have to pick up the pace with. You know, because you, you have Kansas City and, and Detroit going to play the same th same teams that pretty much we're playing. Got him. Nice pitch by T.J. House. Just his second strikeout of the game. But boy, did it come at a good time. You just watched mm -hmm. Jose Abreu. Well, he was able to get VCA on the same pitch. That one didn't break in as much to his back foot, but it was down enough where Garcia wanted to take a whack at it, and he missed it. So that's a good guy to get out and not let the first two reach. Now you're, he already has two double play balls that he's been able to induce. Why not another one? Canerco hit into one in the first. Erko, a guy that is in his career, he's up there in all offensive categories in the White Sox lore, right behind Frank Thomas for a few of them. Second and home runs to Thomas. RBIs to Thomas and you know, Frank Thomas, Hall of Famer. And that's why in your mind, Canerco's not quite a Hall of Famer, huh? I I don't think so. He's he's had a he's really, really solid close. Career. I mean, he's right there. Yeah. I mean, when you when you look at career numbers, it's 280, 439 homers, 1400 ribbies, 2300 hits. But I, I believe it's short. Does have a world championship? Yeah. Back in 2005, he caught the ball. I don't think he's ever been an MVP, and you know, he's had a handful maybe of All Star games. He's, he's been a really good player. And uh, you know he's been a huge part and of beloved this organization. Here in Chicago. I, that's what I'm saying. As far as this organization goes, they'll love him forever because he's had a, a really a wonderful career. That's sure, not up to me, though. It's I'm up sure to every voters. fan here would first time, first ballot Hall of Famer. They, you know. But. Well, and a guy that can't run a lick. He didn't get any of those hits from being able to run him out. Wow. Canerco strikes out back-to-back -back K's. TJ House two down here in the fourth inning. They're going to go inside with it. Boy, that's a good pitch. Backs Canerco off the plate, but it stayed right there. Good fastball. All right, so Canerco, just for the record, tail of the tape six times an All Star, and he was the ALS MVP, MVP in the okay. championship series when they went to the World Series. Well, needless to say, he's, he's, he was a tremendous ball player, good ball player. Gillespie takes its 2 and 0.
change of pace. Nicely done to Ocon. You don't think a left hander on left hander. You're going to give him that change up. But he certainly did. Good pitch. Gets him in a fastball count and pulls a string. Pitch. Ground ball right to the second baseman. Kipnis has it. Throws him out. TJ House gave up two in the first, but he's thrown up three straight zeros now, striking out a pair here in the fourth inning. It's a key bank value ticket available every game. Each kid receives $15 for free to use on concessions or merchandise. Visit Indians.com slash kids value and purchase your tickets today. You know, you were talking about the dollar dogs. It's coming up uh, again when we right. get back home. September 5th. There's a restaurant here in Chicago called the Belly Shack. It's not a hot dog joint. But they do offer a hot dog on their menu. It's an all beef hot dog topped with egg noodles, pickled green papaya, and togarashi spiced fries. Have you tried one? No, but I was thinking about it because it was written up in a magazine as one of those, hey, you've got to try it to believe it. This. You sound like uh, my son Kyle. The he, belly shit. out there and try it. It just sounds like a place you've got to go to, right? <laughs> well, how far is it from the hotel? Uh, I think it was about a 10 minute cab ride. Oh, Greg will take you. <laughs> one ball, one strike to count on Brantley. Here in Chicago, it's all about the sausage. Well, it's all about restaurants, I know that. Now the 1 1. And a strike call to Brantley. How would you like to have been part of the Baltimore Orioles last road trip where they came in here and played three games against the White Sox. They had an off day. They played Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday against the White Sox. Off day Thursday. Went Friday, Saturday, Sunday and played the Cubs. They never left. Stayed in the hotel for a week straight. Rush Street, whether it got them or not, I don't know. But they won the, the they did okay here and they went to play the Cubs. They they, they were swept. They got swept by the Cubs. Yeah, they had to get home. Get some rest. It's one of the it sounds like a really good idea. <laughs> by the end of it, maybe not so much. Chicago's undefeated. Yeah, it always will be. <laughs> Rush Street is. 
One down here in the fifth. Enjoy the experience of a lifetime with Indians Fantasy Camp in Goodyear, Arizona. Limited number of spots remain for the 2015 Fantasy Camp. Oh boy, that'll be here before you know it. I know it may seem like a long way off, but it's it won't not. be. The 17th through the 24th, and if you plan on going, start working out. Get yourself in shape. Indians.com has all the information. That's what I have to do when I season's over. I got to get ready for that. <laughs> Pitch outside. Santana doubled in a run and scored in the first struck out in the second. There's a high fly ball to left field, but playable for Viciato. Two down. Comes Jason Kipnis. One for two on the night. The, the beat goes on for Kip. He's hit now in 23 of 25 games here at U.S. Cellular Field. Buddies were at the game last December on a Monday night when the Bears retired Mike Ditka's number. One of the coldest nights of the year, I think, in Chicago. He said they made it to halftime. They saw Ditka give a speech and then adios. Head indoors. <laughs> it was a great game. The Bears played a great game and they waxed Dallas in that Monday night affair. I don't know how they could function, let alone the storage of the field right there on the lake. It's got to be freezing, huh? Bouncing ball right at the shortstop. Alexei Ramirez throws him out. Indians go one, two, three for the first time tonight. Middle of the fifth, four, two, Cleveland. Four two, the Indians on top, bottom of the fifth, bottom third of the White Sox order due here. Only 59 pitches for TJ House thus far as he delivers down low for ball one. Down the line, that is a fair ball and into the seats for a ground rule double. Third ball we've seen bounce into the seats down there tonight. 
second double for the White Sox. Third time in five innings they have their leadoff man aboard. The Seattle's 21st. There's a ball he left middle of the plate. It looked like a changeup that it speeds up his bat. See it hit the track, jump into the seats, and that young man's going to have a souvenir. Now Tyler Flowers bounced into a double play his first time up and since April has batted below 200 this year. Here's some irony for you in the offseason the White Sox were really interested in Brian McCann. But the Yankees beat him to the punch. And then yesterday literally beat them or rather uh, was it yeah. Sunday. It was it was uh, Sunday. He came off the bench. As a pinch hitter and hit a three run homer in the 10th inning as the Yankees finished off a three game sweep. But Tyler Flowers admits hey I. I haven't. Done enough to just. Earn the the trust of the organization to know that next year I'm going to be their guy. He says I feel like I'm. I've got to fight every day to prove that I can be the everyday starting catcher next year. On this club. Whether or not the White Sox. Stay with Flowers or go out into the free agent market or explore the trade avenue. Yeah, we'll wait and see. I remember earlier in the year he got off to a really good start offensively. April he was. Yeah, he was lights, lights out, out like the rest of the team. I mean, their whole team was very hot. They got started out of the gate, but the key, you know, he's, he's a guy that. Roberto Perez got the worst of this one. Look the at the bare hand, right on the hand. Exactly what happened. He didn't have his hand out of there and he gets him right in the bare hand on the knuckle. That's why a lot of catchers will protect that bare hand by putting it right behind the glove, literally right behind it. it used to be something where catchers would wrap it around yeah, their backside. Way but, underneath. but you lose your balance. And a lot of catchers didn't like that. So a lot of them nowadays will just keep it right behind the glove. But and the reason is because you don't want that to happen to you. Well, you can't hide. It doesn't matter. Even if it's covered, it'll find a way to get it sooner or later. Now you got to get a little feeling back in there. Two to the count. Swing and a miss. Flowers strikes out. Fourth K for TJ House. One down here in the fifth. Our great clip of the game going back to Sunday was Trevor Bauer. One on one out, Carlos Sanchez, the batter, grounded out in the third. To right field. Tyler Holt makes the grab. Messiato will tag and go to third, but there are two gone. Well, you see, in the middle part of the game, they had the leadoff double. They couldn't move them over. That fly ball would have scored them. Makes a difference. Yeah. Well, you get to this point in the season, and this is when you start to look back at boy, if we would have done this, if we would have won a game here or there. Yeah, boy, missed opportunities. How much different the season would look. Well, yeah, you can look at it any which way you want, and you're going to find ways. Well, look at it like this. The Indians lost three out of four to Cincinnati this year. You pointed out that right now the difference between the Royals in first place and the Indians in third is their National interleague league. record. Right. Kansas City 15 and 5 against the National League, the Indians 10 and 10. So, yeah, I mean, and that's the difference. They're five and a half games back, and there's a two out base hit. Loop single for Adam Eaton drives in a run for the White Sox here in the fifth. And it's now a one run game at four to three.
Didn't hit it hard. No, I, as a matter of fact, when I first looked at it, I thought it might have bounced off the plate, but he got it off the end of the bat and just flares it in there. Indians had their own two out flare from Mike Avila, so it's now a 4 3 game. They're sixth hit. They'll give Ramirez a chance to keep this inning going. He's one for two with a single and a run scored. That came in the first. And this is where you want to end it, is right here with this guy, because you got the big boy coming up next. Some stirring in the Indians' bullpen. This is, uh, you know, this is where you got to keep an eye on uh, TJ House, that third time through the lineup. And they know better because it's the bullpen is up and throwing. Ramirez. 27 doubles on the year along with two triples. CC Lee the right hander. Up for Cleveland. That's what you do. You keep throwing over there. Gives the bullpen time to get ready. Wrapped it around the outside corner. Gets ahead of Ramirez. A ball and two strikes. TJ's last start came against Minnesota, and after that game, Brian Dozier, the twin second baseman, said of House, he. He gets the two strikes and then he just he goes to work on you with the off speed pitches, the change ups, the sliders, off speed. He just he said he was very tough to center or square up. The tying run at first base. But House has Ramirez down on the count one and two. Figuring Eaton might be itching to go with a two strike count. Ramirez launches it to deep left and out of here. The White Sox have the lead. A one two pitch. Home run number 13, RBIs number 61 and 62. It's a three run fifth inning for Chicago, and they lead it 5 to 4. Well, he kept throwing over there and throwing over there, and the next thing you know, make a mistake on the plate. Ramirez, uh, he hit it out of here. And there it was, middle of the plate. He didn't make a good pitch. He left it on the dish and uh, he's going to be done. I, I think they were stalling throwing the first base and throwing the first base. Hopefully they can get him out. But uh, he made a mistake. He's going to end up walking out on the short end of it right now. Five to four only goes four and two thirds innings. Seventy four pitches but he's out with the Indians trailing five to four. And the Cleveland call clinic call to the bullpen will be for CC Lee.
23rd appearance of the year. He'll be facing Jose Abreu, who doubled and scored in the first, walked his last time up. TJ House was cruising along. He put up three consecutive zeros in innings two through four, but with two outs here in the fifth inning. An RBI bloop single to Adam Eaton and a two run homer to Alexi Ramirez. And just like that, Chicago takes their first lead of the night. Well, we've said it a lot of times with CC, or excuse me, with TJ House that, you know, he bends but never breaks. Today, he broke in the fifth. Uh, one mistake there, the home run, he had a chance to get out of that inning. Made a mistake on the plate. Looked like he was trying to go in with a fastball, but it, it was on the dish. And Ramirez, who stands close to the plate, just dropped the barrel head on it. Now it's the first time he's given up more than three earned runs. You got to go back to June 9th at Texas, where he gave up five. One and two to count as Abreu swing and a miss. To first base, Santana will flip it to Lee, and the inning is over. But the two run homer by Alexei Ramirez has the Sox on top. Five to four. Photo of the game. And remember, you can tweet your photos to us using the hashtag STO fan photo for a chance to have one of your pictures shown in our telecast. It's all courtesy of AT&T. Well, time for the offense to go back to work now. Jose Quintana got off to a rough start, but he's managed three scoreless innings now. After the Indians got three in the first and another in the second. Avila, Zach Walters, and Tyler Holt for the Indians here in the sixth. Stairs with it, two and two.
action in the Chicago bullpen because Quintana's nearing the 100 pitch mark. Right back up the middle, and the Indians get their leadoff man aboard. In game recap brought to you by Toyota. Carlos Santana with an RBI double in the first. Mike Avilas also drove in a run with a little bloop single, made it three nothing Cleveland right out of the shoot, but then White Sox got two in the bottom of the first. Michael Brantley got the Indians a run back in the second. And then Chicago turned the tables on the tribe in the fifth. Now it's the Indians' turn here in inning number six. Zach Walters one for two. A little bit high, ball one. Walters was on a home run binge there for a while. He homered in three straight games. His infield hit in the first snapped an 0 for 9 slump. Foul back. Matt Lindstrom getting loose for Chicago. Steps out. Time was called before Quintana delivered. Upstairs, it's three and one. Real good chance this is going to be it for Quintana. Robin Ventura no longer sitting, but standing in the Chicago dugout. Popped up. Might be playable. Foul ground. No, it'll get about two, three rows back. We have a belated birthday announcement to go out tonight to Charlie Wilhelm, who celebrated his 79th birthday yesterday on the Indians' off day in Westlake, Ohio. Any relation to White Wilhelm? Charlie, happy birthday, the <laughs> knuckleballer. We'll ask Jim Folk if Charlie's got a good knuckleball. Oh, if it's coming from Jim, it might be a relation. His next door neighbor. Okay. He's, he's tuning in today, again today, huh? Wasn't he in uh, talking to us on Sunday as well? We were talking he's about everywhere. the town outside Chicago. He's everywhere. He's alive and well. Zach Walters draws a walk and say goodnight, Jose Quintana. Here comes Robin Ventura. He'll go to the bullpen for Matt Lindstrom as the Indians try to come right back after Chicago took their first lead of the night in the fifth inning. Socks up 5 4. We got a break in the action.
the White Sox. And it'll be the last time Paul Canerco makes his trip into Cleveland. So come on out to the ballpark. 10,000 fans will get the shirt. Voted by you earlier this year. Well, we'll see what Matt Lindstrom has to feature here tonight. His ERA is over five. It's been a disappointing year for him. Well, let's see what the Indians do here. First and second, nobody out. Bottom part of the lineup, move them over. Try and tie this game up or take the lead back. Tried to bunt. Nothing doing. One one. Foul third base side count no balls two strikes Matt Lindstrom's 34 years old and last year in his first year with the White Sox had an ERA of 3.12 and pitched in 76 games. That's why I say this year it's been a disappointing season for him. Well that's pretty much every other game you know when you think about it. Well and you go on the disabled list. Yeah. Sometimes uh, you know it wears you down relievers you know depending on how much work they get throughout the course of their career once they use you use and use and use if you come into 70 games that's a boatload. Tyler Holt now down 0 and 2 will try to. Almost look like a cleat got caught as he's spinning. Ooh, look at these it was awkward. Michael Jackson spinning. Holt strikes out. Couldn't get the butt down, and then a high fastball took care of him. He struck out all three times tonight. One down here in the sixth, and we go back to the studios for a Mazda game break. Thanks, Al. Two on, one out, and now Roberto Perez. Well, I think he's saying the the Indians better score. Ball, ball. Yep. Roberto Perez did have a single his last time up. That let off the inning. See, checks it, but it gets a piece of the wood right there, falls off the inside part of the leg of Flowers. Center field, that's a base hit. Coming around third field, it's going to be waved on the ball, gets by. Look at this, two will score. On his way to second base is Roberto Perez. A muff in center field by Adam Eaton allows the Indians to regain the lead. Well, he has nobody to blame but himself because it's going to go as a single. And then the error, he tried to decoy the runner like he was going to catch this ball. And then it was a line drive and it hit and skipped past him. You know, it was all on the decoy. Look at he wasn't going to catch the ball, but he did catch the ball because it was hit so hard. He wasn't paying attention to where the ball was going. It gets by him. That allows Avilas to score. Walters comes all the way from first, and the Indians retake the lead 6 5 now. So give Roberto Perez one RBI. And the second run scores on the error by Adam Eaton. But both those runs will be charged to Quintana. The 
Indians up now six to five. Eaton obviously embarrassed right now in center field. You never, I mean, that's a play that. Well, you know what? 99 times out of 100, this does not happen. But. No, and, and you know what? I you see outfielders try to decoy on a blue. That was a line drive. You've got to make sure you play that ball well. If one scores, it's a tie game. You let two score, now you're you're behind. Well, that was a bad mistake by him. Michael Bourne bounced into a double play his last time up. And now he wraps one right back up the middle. Perez coming around third. Sarval's going to wave him home. Eaton's throw is in time. Perez looks into the dugout as if to tell Terry Francona. He Thought he beat the play, but I don't know. Did he get the plate? Is my question. I don't know if he tagged the plate because Flowers looks like he was out in front to get it. They're going to have to take a look before he's going to go anywhere. You can see Brad Mills on the phone. There's the base hit. Now Perez not blessed with good speed, but you got to try and send him. You can see Eaton's throw one hopper right there. The ball Ooh. beat him. I don't know. That does, looks... But does he touch the plate? Is my question. <laughs> He touches the plate. Did he tag him? He must have. Shoulder. Because Look at they're the shoulder. not going to review. Look at the shoulder. There it is. Yeah, he Barely. got him right on the shoulder. He sure did. So no challenge. And there are two down in the inning. So that gives Adam Eaton a little confidence back. He's still going to be mad at himself. Not out of play. Now there's a pitch there if your Ramirez take it. Bourne had a great jump. It's an 0 1 count. And you can see it out of the corner of your eye if he takes off. Let give him an opportunity to steal the base and let him get in scoring position. He fouled it off now. He's going to have to battle 0 2 count. I'd rather have an 0 2 count with a man on second than an 0 2 count with a man on first. Now, Lindstrom quickly strikes out Jose Ramirez. So the Indians get one, but they lose one. However, they've taken the lead 6 to 5.
Six five Indians. It could have been seven five if not for this tag by Tyler Flowers. Just did catch the shoulder of Roberto Perez. That shot brought to you by Wendy's slow motion replay right on the edge. And he got in there. Thought he was going to make it. Joe West right there to call him out. Abisail Garcia will lead off the sixth. He is one for two. Drove in a pair in the first with a base hit. Struck out his last time up. Lefty righty action in the Cleveland bullpen. CC Lee got the last out of the fifth, but we've seen Terry Francota. Now that the Indians have the lead, he will exhaust every arm in that bullpen if need be. When Garcia burst onto the scene with the Detroit Tigers a few years ago, immediately he was dubbed Mini Miguel Cabrera, Mini Miggy. Because at that time, when he dressed out in the Tiger uniform, yeah. he bore an uncanny resemblance he to did. Miguel Cabrera. And that swing right there is an awful lot like Miguel Cabrera. Inside out approach. It gets by Tyler Holt. And Garcia slid into second because he didn't know what was going on behind him. He never looked at Joe McEwing, his third base coach. He slid into second base. Never looked at McEwing, who was telling him right there, look at me, you should have been coming. Yeah, they catch a break, the Indians do, because if the ball at Holt goes down into the corner and he gets by him. That's a nice swing right there, by the way, by Garcia to stay on the baseball. You always have to have your head up watching it. As that ball gets down there and it's a tricky corner, he slides. And then by the time he can come up and there's uh, McEwing, he's looking over there. That's hard to see. He's thinking double all the way because Holt was over there in time. But it's a leadoff double, so there's the tying run. Eight hits now for the White Sox. Paul Canerco is 0 for 2 tonight. And he got hit or no? Yeah, it did. It got him. Sure did. A lot like the one we saw Brantley earlier. Almost took his belt loop off. Well, you can see that ball's running in. Well, timeout for another pitching change. CC Lee gets the last out of the fifth inning, but he's allowed the first two to reach here in the sixth. Long way to go in this one, I believe. 6 5 Cleveland. We've got another pitching change.
Canes go to Mark Zipchinski. Left hander will be come on yeah, coming on to the game. For the 58th time this year, no wins, three losses, a 3.10 earn run average. And Zipchinski will be facing the left handed hitting Connor Gillespie. Gillespie, as we mentioned earlier, has been very good for him this year. Over the 300 mark. He's hit the Indians well. The way he swung the bat, I, I don't see them giving up a bunt here in this situation at this point in time of the ball game. In for a strike to Gillespie. Zipchinski. In a tough spot here. Oh one. Foul ball. I'll be really curious to see how Terry Francona decides to play this out too, depending on what happens. Zipchinski has not been per se a strict left on left matchup guy this year. No, but are you bringing this guy zipper in for one hitter? That's what I'm curious yeah. to see if that's if that's the way Terry plays this, because he's got a right hander up behind him in the bullpen. Well, right handers are hitting 369 off him, so yeah, you have to say he probably is. Get this out here. They need an out period right now, huh? Uh huh. I would say yeah, just match him up here against uh, Gillespie. You've got Tank Viciato waiting on deck. It would be even a bigger out if you could keep him. Out there at second base and not let him advance to third. See Scott Atchison on the mound in the bullpen. Now the one-two to Gillespie. Down and in, missed two and two. Garcia the tying run at second. Canerco go ahead run at first. And out goes Roberto Perez. Zipchinski ready with a 2 2. And Gillespie fouls it back. Just got a piece of that fastball inside. First base side. Well, Gillespie's batted over 450 against the Indians this year. He singled in his first at bat. And he's proven to be a tough out here in a key spot in the game. Yeah, hitting 333 with runners in scoring position.
The 2 2. Did he hang on to it? Nope, got in the dirt. Boy, just getting a piece of the last two pitches. One in, one out, one a fastball, one a breaking ball. I mean, this one was just barely tipped. Enough to go straight down into the ground. Once again, a 2 2 pitch. Eighth pitch of the at bat. Strikes him out. Boy, he just buried him with no swinging room whatsoever. Tied him up nicely. And it will be one batter for Zipchinski as Terry Francona will go back to his bullpen with one out now here in the sixth inning. Yeah, Zipchinski he made, strikes out his man. Yeah, he made Gillespie get himself out. He swung at a ball off the plate. He was just trying to follow it off and stay alive. So Zipper comes in. He does his job. Nice job getting the first out. Now Scott Atchison when we come back. But Chicago threatening with first and second and one out. New Indians pitcher is Scott Atchison. He'll be on to face Dion Viciedo. Atchison unbeaten on the year, 276 ERA. The consummate strike thrower. And right now, this is the point in time. This is a save in this ball game. I don't care if you're in the sixth inning, but a big uh, hold. And he's going to do it. Kipnis goes to second. There's one. Ramirez on the turn. They got two. And they get out of the inning. Atchison throws one pitch. And the Indians turn a double play behind him. Six complete from Chicago. The Indians lead it six to five.
Five leads it as we go to the seventh inning. Before we do, it's Miller time, brought to you by Miller Lite. And we flash back to this date in 1987 with Paul Molitor on deck. Rick Manning delivers a game winner against the Indians at Old County Stadium. One nothing. And the Brewers go on to win it one to nothing. Who started that game for the Indians? John Johnny Farrell, Farrell right? yeah. Johnny, he was a rookie that year. He started. He got Molitor four times. Javi Guerra coming on now for Chicago. 32nd appearance. Did you ever see a guy year. get a game winning hit in his home park and get booed? It I wasn't going to bring it up. I was going to let it die. Uh, well, don't. I was going to let it go. to talk about it. All right. It only happens once a year. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> Every year for the last. For those of knows. you who don't know, Paul Molitor was on deck. He had a 39 game hitting streak at the time. He was 0 for 4. He had his chances, but you got the game winning hit, denying him of an opportunity to keep the streak alive in that next at bat. So instead of you being cheered, you got booed right. for the game winning hit. One nothing. That's by your okay. own fans. We went home. Teddy Higuera was happy. Did you get the cheese uh, the cheese head for that game? No, that was the if you struck out three times in the game. The, oh. That was no. Did you get the I star, the of, the star game? of the game? You yes. Did. I can't tell you what that was. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you later. It's better that way. Here's the 1 0 to Michael Brantley, and it's in tight, but he. Dives back. Brantley was hit by a pitch in the first. Led to a run. He doubled in a run in the second, grounded out his last time up. How many times? Once a year at least, somebody probably calls to interview you about that. Yeah, it, yeah, they start talking about it a lot. I mean, you, you talk about Paul Molitor and they say, you, you know, you stopped his streak. I mean, how do I stop? I'm a hitter, for goodness <laughs> sakes. I, I, I had never pitched in my it's, life. It's your lot in life. I, I mean, just... seriously. <laughs> You know, go figure. You stopped the stream. Okay, okay fine. Sure. I did. I did. You can't fight him. No. So I've joined him. There was an old commercial. Don't fight him. Join him. I have a long time ago. Now the two one. I'm trying to think, Rick. Is that is that the closest though? Still, anybody's come to Dimaggio? The American 49? League. Well, it was the longest one since Rose's 44 game streak back ah. at the time. That was the National League, but. You know, in the American League, it was. I'm trying to think. There was one more longer than that. Oh, Sandy got to 30, right? Yes. In 1997. Uh huh. Popped him up on the infield. Gillespie calls for it now. Makes the catch. And Brantley is out number one. High school football returns Friday night here on Sports Time Ohio. Our coverage will begin immediately following Indians Live, which is right after the ball game here on STO. And then we got football. How about Euclid against the Hudson Explorers? Hudson bounced them 36 to 7 last year, so they might be playing with a little chip on their shoulder, the Euclid Panthers. One down for Carlos Santana. Rick, do you remember in, in 1987 was the media coverage starting to swell for Molitor yeah, at that was, point? Yeah, it was, yes. I mean, back then, you know, it was Nightline or something that they had, and he did his one interview a day, and that was it. And everybody had to be there because he wasn't going to cater to everybody. So, yeah, it was starting to get crazy, and you're like, my goodness. Nowadays, if you do it, it would be, oh, it would be. absurd. But, it, yeah, it was, it was starting to get really hairy because he was going for 40. You know, and it was an impressive thing to watch. Think about that, though. Getting to 40, you're at 40 games. You're still 16 Six, yeah, from you're still tying him. Two weeks away. Yeah. And I think for DiMaggio, after his was stopped in Cleveland by Kenny, well, Kenny Keltner helped because he made a couple of nice plays nice from third where, base. Yeah. We're told he went on and had an 18 game hitting streak after yeah. that. Plus, what was the number? He had some astounding hitting streak when he was in the minor leagues, too. One two pitch. Well, arguably one of the greatest hitters, maybe not the, but one of the greatest hitters well, in the history of the you game. You talk to some people, they, uh, people have told me he's, he was the best hitter of all time. 
But it all depends on who you talk to. Yeah, there's two camps. Ted Williams, oh, Joe yeah. DiMaggio. And then the old timers will throw in Ty Cobb. Well, okay, Chula's let's say Joe. let's say best player of all time with uh, Joe D. That would be hard to argue there, I think. All around. And he's got all the world championships. That's what his camp will always say over Ted Williams. We got the rings, the hardware. Yeah, right. 3 2 the count for Carlos Santana, who doubled in a run in the first. And he draws his walk, his daily base on balls, with one out here in the seventh. Mike Pock, the, I had forgotten about this. The longest, he just told me the longest hit streak since Molitor, Rick, was just a few years ago when Jay, Jimmy Rollins got to 38. Did he really? I can't. I, why don't I remember? I don't. That? I probably because we're in the. Oh, that wasn't over the course of one year. It ended one year and started. Oh, the next. Nah, that we don't count, count that. that no, no, we don't count that. You guys down in the truck too. We don't. No, no, no. Consecutive flags on the field. Yes, we <laughs> back them up. False start. <laughs> uh. One on one out Jason Kipnis with a single and an RBI on the night. Checks his swing. That's going to be a base hit. It will work out perfectly. His second hit of the night. The hometown kid can do no wrong in the Windy City. Well why not that's a beautiful thing right there when you can check your swing and it hits it you know that that means you're playing better. His own Things teammates are. Yeah. are all over him in the dugout. Sure, you check your swing, you're fooled on the pitch, and you check it, it goes off the plate and it stays fair, and nobody can make a play. Doesn't get any better than that. Look at Brantley. Yeah, he's over there. Look at that. Put your head down and just keep running. Looks like a line drive in the paper tomorrow. People aren't going to read that and say, let me see, two for four. Yeah. That didn't hit the plate. That was a line drive, you tell him. Well, Mike Avilas already has two hits tonight, an RBI and a run scored. Indians with 12 hits now. And they've gone line to line, and they've gone off the plate a couple of times. They've had everything rolling. And offensively, they needed a game like this. This is what has to get going for the Indians. Now that they're trying to make a push and a move, and they, they're playing a lot of games in a row and they're in the central division. Bob right back one on one. You know this is the one game where the, the starting pitching they, they weren't able to hold them down so it's time for the offense to pick up the pitching and they're certainly doing their share. Broke his bat, but this one won't get to the outfield grass. It's caught by Sanchez, two down. So that'll bring up Zach Walters, who has an infield single, a walk and a run scored on the night. He'll bat left handed, though, for the first time in the game. Pick him up right here with two. Two out. Get another one. Upstairs, ball one. Fastball popped up. Foul. Might be playable here. Gillespie reaches over the tarp. Does he hold on? No, he can't he secure the baseball. Got caught right at the corner of that tarp. Sure That's did. what happened. Not Tough sure. Play. I think he got to it. I just don't know if it was ever in his glove or not. You know, when you're going over there, you're, you see, you can't take your eye off it, but there's the corner of the tarp. And he had no more room. 
He had to jump over that tarp if he wanted to reach. If he got on the side, he might have had, been able to. But that's just really tough play. No, never got no, to sure it. Sure did not. Popped him up. Center field out goes Ramirez. Makes the catch. Indians squander a scoring chance here in the seventh inning. But they hold a six to five lead as we reach the seventh inning stretch. Brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. Life is hard. Buying a car shouldn't be. Coming around there to field, he waves on the ball, gets by. Look at this, two will score. On his way to second base is Roberto Perez. A muff in center field by Adam Eaton allows the Indians to regain the lead. And that's where we stand right now, going into the bottom of the seventh. Scott Atchison came on and made one pitch and got a double play to get out of the sixth. He'll stay on to start the seventh, and Tyler Flowers looks at a ball down low. Yeah, you talk about being efficient for Atchison. One pitch, the two outs. Stop that. Uh, they had first and second, nobody out, and able to get out of it. Flowers ropes one to left field. Well, Chicago's done a heck of a job getting their leadoff man aboard. That's four innings in a row. They've had their leadoff man aboard here tonight. That's the hit Canerco after the leadoff double, then it? You get the strikeout, a big pitch, uh, a big at bat there by Zinchinski. Then how about the one pitch double play? Well, they uh, minimized the damage, minimized their pitches, and they went right back into the dugout. Now Carlos Sanchez 0 for 2. He's a switch hitter and will bat from the left side for the first time tonight. Tried to bunt it, but it's fouled back to Perez. Sanchez six hits and 21 at bats. Well, there, that the bunt end. there wasn't like a sacrifice, man. It's almost like he tried to bunt for a base hit. Yeah. You know, because his bat was behind him, he was tardy. So I don't really know if he did that on his own or. Ventura put the sacrifice on it certainly didn't look like one. Swinging that time fouled back.
off the end of the bat. He's checking the cup in to see if there's a chunk missing, but that seems to be intact. Boy, it's a bad feeling. You're down there. You you, you know you want to get that guy to second base. Down on the count, 0 2, and you got to fight. I mean, really battle to try and get the ball in play. The 0 2 popped him up back out of play. I wonder if the big numbers will ever be in vogue in baseball the way they are, like in hockey. I mean, Paul Coffey made 77 cool. 88. How many guys can make 77 cool? But he did. Yeah, and you got Bobby or uh, Bobby. Jose Abreu is wearing 79 right. you know, for the White Sox. You know what? Uh, why not? Single yeah. digits. Some organizations look at the Yankees. I don't think they have a single digit left. Not, not once Jeter's well, done. No, I mean they're not going to give his number out to anybody, so they don't have a single digit. I don't left. think so. Yeah, I think I think it will. White Sox the number of their single digits are gone as well. You know, back in the day, there were a lot of single digits, no high numbers. Now with all the rosters, and the players that come up, sometimes yeah. you get a high number, and you, you just like it because you. That was your first one. Who knows? I remember the story. Jose Abreu said his his mom told him to choose 79 because she said it'll make you stand out. People will remember you. Be different. Well, that's not a bad way to look at it. He is different. He's an animal. Outside, he missed two and two. He's encouraging his teammate. Sanchez right now from the dugout. Nick Hagedon getting loose now in the Cleveland bullpen. Line to center, a base hit. Boy, Chicago. They're starting now. They have uh, two innings in a row. They get their first two aboard. They've been able to set the table. They just haven't been able to clean it up. Now here's a, a bad pitch, a hanging breaking ball right there that said hit me, and uh, he certainly did. He, he had him down in the count, 0-2. Made a mistake pitch. And Sanchez took advantage of it. Now you're rolling it over to the top of the lineup now with Eaton. Well, after Adam Eaton, there are four straight right-handed bats in the lineup, so. Maybe Hagedon's up in case a potential pinch hitter. I don't know. Showing bunt takes ball one. He singled in a run and scored in the fifth. Yeah, you're getting into to game time now. Seventh inning on. Getting back to the meteor lineup. You have to have Eaton Bunt here. Not only the tying run, but the go ahead run. You want to try and get in scoring position if you can. Bunts it back foul. Not a good pitch to bunt right here. That's one you got to take. I don't know if it would have been a strike. It was close. He only has one sacrifice bunt on the air, believe it or not. He squares, bunts it well done. Yeah, that's a good one. You force the third baseman to feel it. His only play is to go to first. That's the way to do it. Atchison wanted to cut it off and get the run at third. He just bunted it by him and had no chance. So, and once you get it, if you bunt it right at the third baseman, see Atchison wanted to come off. That's just a good bunt. You force the third baseman to come get it. Doesn't matter how hard you bunt it. He's not going to catch it and go back to third. His only play is first base, so his second bunt. Now they have the tying and go ahead running scoring positions. Now nah, he's got his work cut out for him. Well, he's got Alexei Ramirez, who's two for three on the night. He had a two run homer his last time up.
pops it and a foul ball. This was the fifth inning. Last pitch of the night for TJ House. Yeah. He uh, made that mistake. That was four and two thirds, and he that gave the White Sox the lead. His 13th home run. Short lived lead, I might add. Down low. To the shortstop Ramirez who throws him out. But the tying run scores as Flowers comes home from third. Really nice play by Ramirez to get uh, Ramirez. His 60. Third run batted in on the year, third of the night. That ball gets by Avila's at third. You had to stay put if you were at second base, but uh, Jose Ramirez made a nice play. This is where you have to be careful here. First base open. The big RBI guy, just go ahead and put him on. Huh? Are you going to go after him? I'd put him on. Well, yeah, I, I will say this. Atchison knows uh, he's been around long enough. We'll see what they do. Uh, yeah, they just go ahead and put him on. I, I mean, Garcia's not a walk in the park behind him, but this guy's hit 33 home he, runs he, this year. He has 94 RBIs. Yeah. He's leading the team. He's. he's up there in the league. Let's, uh, yeah, you just don't take chances. And as we know, the on deck hitter now says, okay, I'm taking this personal. Well, and this is an on deck hitter that's going to be a tough at bat because he goes to right field. He stay, he'll stay on the breaking ball from uh, Scott Atchison. He's not an easy out by any means. And I'll tell you, the middle part of this lineup, that's what uh, they, they have missed this year. Garcia has been out all year with that. Bad shoulder. Had to have the surgery on. He's back again, and boy, it's it's a tough part, middle part of that lineup. Abisail Garcia drove in a pair with a single right up the middle his first time up, and he doubled into the right field corner in the sixth. Towards Ramirez, he'll go to second for the inning ending force. Atchison gives up one, but will go to the eighth, tied at six.
by authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Pinch hitter for the Indians will be Chris Dickerson. As we roll on to the eighth inning, and Javi Guerra will stay on for a second inning of relief work. Tyler Holt struck out all three times tonight. So Dickerson gets a chance with the right hander on the hill. Stairs ball one. <laughs> Detroit beat New York five to two. Kansas City got a walk off to beat Minnesota two to one. Upstairs he missed two and zero. Oh. Three. That was nowhere close. Wide of the mark as well. Well, you Four take that walk to start yeah. the inning. That's going to drive Don Cooper nuts. In game box score brought to you by Hyundai. A lot of action for the Indians. They have banged out a dozen hits tonight. They've scored a half dozen, but we're all tied up right now 6 6. And Chris Dickerson, who just pinch hit for Tyler Holt, is aboard now to start. This eighth inning Roberto Perez has two hits including an RBI single his last time up. Well I'm thinking here we go with another sacrifice. He's also done that a lot since he's been here. He already has four sacrifices. And he's uh, only been in the 16th game. But the situation dictates it. They give you a base runner let's move him over. You have a couple shots to try and get him in. By ball one. And out goes Flowers. He hasn't thrown a strike this inning. He got a right hander up in the bullpen. Zach Putnam, the former Indian. I, I don't know what uh, Robin Ventura is thinking right now, but well, he's thinking, hey, throw a strike soon. <laughs> I was going to say, he's thinking, hey, they're trying to give you an out and throw a strike. But if you're a hitter, you know, you could take one. He's, I think Perez is a good enough bunter. You just make him throw a strike. Unless this is right down the middle. A lot of times, players, hitters, get in sacrifice situations. They feel they have to lay down every pitch. You yeah. got to make him throw you a strike. Just be patient, like you would be as a hitter. It's easier to see the ball when you're squared around and you got two eyes on it. There you go. Gary looked to second but didn't have a good grip on it. Takes the out at first. And a go ahead run into scoring position. I almost think Rick sometimes because sacrifices aren't done as often and maybe guys aren't fundamentally schooled on them the way they used to be. That sometimes now a player that gets into a sacrifice situation. It's like a hitter who's in an 0 for 15. He feels like he's got to swing at every yeah. pitch. You got to do it. Yes. I got to do it on this pitch or the next yeah. pitch. Or, yeah. I only get three chances. Actually, two. I only get two chances because they'll take it off once you get to two strikes. Right. So make sure you get two strikes to, to, to sacrifice in. 
Well, and here comes Robin Ventura. He's going to make the move. He makes the, the the call right there. Indians have the go-ahead run in scoring position with one out in the eighth. Top of the order coming up. Guerra is out. Former Indian Zach Putnam will be coming on. What continues as the Reds take on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern right here on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Zach Putnam was drafted by the Cleveland Indians, got to the big leagues with the Tribe, but then was uh, dealt to the Colorado Rockies for Kevin Slowey before the 2012 campaign. Spent most of that year at AAA with Colorado, and then last year spent most of the year with the Chicago Cubs organization. But this year he has really come into his own. He's been their best bullpen guy, which tells you Robin Ventura is pulling out all the stops trying to win this game. Yeah, and with another right hander, he has that like split change that off speed pitch that'll go down in the way where he can get left handers out. Now whether he can get to it, we'll see. Michael Bourne's had a good night. Two hits, a walk, and a run scored. Dickerson, pretty good speed at second base. Down low, one and one. There was the pitch. Putting him a former Wolverine from Michigan. And now born ahead in the count two balls and a strike. Just, just a little, a little low. low, yeah. Yep. If you're if you're putting them, you want that call. Born lifts one to left field. Routine play for Viciato. I think Michael Bourne would like to have that one back. <laughs> Well, when you pull the string and you put it away, it's hard to stay on top of that baseball. You hit it up in the air. So Jose Ramirez, the batter, with two down, and Dickerson at second base.
pitch outside ball one. Jose Ramirez with a chance to break the deadlock. Lays off its load, 2 and 0. Oh. And out goes Tyler Flowers. Well, you can't get too uh, too fine with this guy. You've got to be a little more aggressive. You got Michael Brantley on deck. Look for a fastball right here if you're Ramirez if you get it. Put a good swing on it. Oh boy. Pitch was up, elevated. He gets what he was looking for. I think that was a little cutter. But he let it go. 2 0. Swing it. There's another fastball. That one was right down the middle of the plate. And it's two and two. Remember the other night when he got the game winner, he just flared one it over was down. the third baseman's head. It was down too. That one just a little bit up, maybe. He liked that ball. I think the one he got the game winner on that was about knee high. And out over the plate that he did slice it. A good pitch. Putting him with back to back fastballs. The two two off speed. Broke his bat. Scooped up. Thrown and the call is an out at first. Terry Francona comes out. It was bang bang. We'll take a second look. We'll see if Terry Francona wants to challenge. We're in the eighth inning. And Terry says, No, you're good. So the inning is over, and we'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Still tied at six. Chicago as you take a look at U.S. Cellular Field from our Panini's overstuffed cam. Indians and White Sox opening a three game series here tonight. Chris Dickerson. Taking over in right field after he pinch hit. White Sox. Brought a season high six game losing streak into tonight's game. They've also lost 13 of their last 17 and they've fallen a dozen games below 500. So with all of those factors involved and school has now started up no. No real surprise that the crowd is. Thinned accordingly here. At US cellular. 
Canerco flares one into center field, and that will be caught by Michael Bourne, who went into an all-out diving attempt to take a hit away from Canerco. Well, that ball sounded funny. You know, it sounded like a thud off the end of the bat. And it was a big swing, so Bourne had to get out his oars coming straight in, and he's going to extend out and make a nice play, keep that leadoff man aboard. Chicago's been so good at doing that tonight. Jerry Francona. Done. Yeah, he's going to go back to the bullpen now. He's going to go for the left hander, Nick Hagedon, when we return. Fans receive a Michael Brantley bobblehead on Labor Day. The Indians will host the Tigers for the final time this year at Progressive Field. By now at Indians.com. With one out here in the bottom of the eighth, Connor Gillespie will be the batter. Nick Haggard on, who's been in the best groove of his big league career. Might only be on to face the one batter. I'm not sure. I think Brian Shaw is up. He is in the Indians bullpen. So it might be one batter for Hagedon. an attention getter. Well, especially you, you got to look for the fastball because Hagedon throws it at 95. And if he's got his breaking ball tonight, it's going to be a tough at bat because Gillespie had a, a first pitch fastball that he fouled back. That was a low tracer, and that's in for a strike one and two. Boy, now you're sitting there thinking, boy, oh boy, you haven't seen the breaking ball yet either. This went down and away in a great spot. Throw a good curveball here, and you may have them. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Gillespie, no match for Hagedon. Two down here in the eighth, and here comes Terry Francona. Well, uh, you know, when you get a left-hander and you see three fastballs, you're down one, two, and one of them was up around your chin, and he throws that pitch. Uh, you don't have much of a chance. So a quick night, four pitches. Hagedon doesn't have to shower tonight. Easy work for him. Out comes Brian Shaw from the Indians bullpen when we.
Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care is coming up next here on Sports Time Ohio. Brian Shaw is now on to pitch for the Indians with two down here in the eighth inning. He'll be facing a pinch hitter for Dion Viciedo. He goes to uh, Alejandro De Aza. And Brian Shaw goes right at him with a first pitch strike. The average time for an Indians game that goes nine innings this year is three hours and five minutes. I'm going to bring that up because we are currently at three hours and five minutes on this game here tonight. So we're not going to make it. I think the average for all of baseball is 312. Well, that's what the Indians' uh, average time of game is. Overall, that includes the extra inning affairs, I assume. Included. It's just hard to believe, but we only have how many extra inning games do we have this year? Well, I'll tell you how many we have. We have 14. All right, so those the cumulative effect of those 14 extra innings games it only bumps up the average time of game seven minutes. That's hard to believe because when you played, uh, I remember three 14 inning games, they seem like eternity. I know. Especially the one out in Arizona, it was five hours and 32 or 33 minutes. Something like that. Two two count. Shaw deals. And Diaza, did he go around? Yes, he did. The inning is over. Back to back strikeouts in the eighth inning for the White Sox. They go one, two, three. We go to the ninth, tied at six. Side furniture. TJ House against the Sox right handed power bats. And uh, well, the big hit was uh, Alexei Ramirez who hit the two run homer, right handed bat. He ended up with five runs allowed. And uh, hey, the Indians haven't hit a home run, but they've hit the ball tonight a dozen hits. They've had uh, six runs scored, chance for more. They've just, been all over the ballpark, yeah. four doubles. They had that in the first two innings. Deaza stays in the game in left field. Zach Putnam got the last two outs of the eighth. He stays on to pitch the ninth. Michael Brantley will lead off. Then it's Carlos Santana and Jason Kipnis. So good opportunity for the Indians. They've got the meat of their order here in the ninth.
Brantley takes its low ball one. Indians have had their leadoff man aboard five out of eight innings tonight, but only twice in those five innings were they able to score. Top of the strike zone, one on one. Outfield for the White Sox, straight up and deep. Outside with a two and one. Brantley batting 300 with eight of his 18 home runs coming in the seventh inning or later this year. Interesting catching stance there by Tyler Flowers as that ball is hit to center. Adam Eaton runs it down. One gone on the night, then Carlos Santana to the plate. Santana doubled in a run and scored in the first, walked his last time up. When Flowers wants a pitch down, he goes to a knee, drops down to a knee. But in doing so, he exposes his entire thigh. Now he's a big dude as far as catchers go. Remember back when Tony Pena was a young catcher, he would sit all oh, the way yeah. down on the ground. Yes, he would. And stick his leg out. I don't think I've, I, I've never seen anybody do that before or since. No, you won't. Let me paint you. You talk about the low target. My goodness. This pitch right here, right at the knees. You can't hit that. That's perfect pitch. Outside with it. One ball, two strikes. Chase one in the dirt. Two down. Yeah, you're going to see the off speed pitch from Putnam after he put one there. And now you can expand that hitter strike zone. One two count, he's going to throw it even lower. That little split change up that he throws. And he expands that strike zone from Santana, goes down as a victim. Putnam's only given up 33 hits in his 46 innings of work this year. And in case you're wondering, only two home runs allowed. Jason Kipnis. Couple of hits and RBI tonight. His last hit was an excuse me swing that went about 40 feet up the third baseline. Good for an infield hit. And that was an opportunity the Indians could not take advantage of. They had two on with one out. They were unable to score. Pitch inside corner of strike. Kipnis doesn't like it, but I have to admit the first glance it looked like it was on the corner. Pretty good pitch. 
don't know if that's a cutter, man. It looks like it's got that little spin to it, a little run to it. Putnam strikes him out. He retires all five that he faces tonight. And we'll go to the bottom of the ninth, tied at six. Tied at six, bottom of the ninth. For Chicago, Tyler Flowers, Carlos Sanchez, and Adam Eaton are due up. Brian Shaw, who got the last out of the eighth inning, will stay on. Tyler Flowers singled his last time up. He would come around to score the tying run. Like the Indians, the White Sox have had their leadoff man on five out of eight innings. And like the Indians tonight, only twice has that led to runs. Flowers a swing and a miss, one and one. Wow, what happened in the 11th inning in Toronto? Uh, Boston scored seven. It was tied. <laughs> yeah. Flowers down the right field line, slicing foul. Seven run 11th inning. You don't yeah. see that very often. Came off their closer, Jansen. Some of them, not all of them. Four of them did. Tough to figure Toronto this year. Yeah, they're back to 500 now, I think, with that uh, yeah. loss. It's not final yet, but. They had lost seven out of ten coming into tonight. Well, at one time they were sitting top the standings, looking good, sitting pretty. And a team named Baltimore got hot. Pretty good pitch there. Wow. Two and two the count. Oh yeah, that's a little bit inside. Didn't look like it from behind them. Foul out of play down the left side.
out of play. Give the White Sox credit. They certainly have not looked like a team that has lost six straight simply playing out the string. Indians jumped on him with three in the top of the first. But Chicago came right back three straight hits scored two in the bottom of the first. Yeah. And then they would take the lead with a three run fifth inning. And all three runs scored with two outs thanks to that man Alexi Ramirez. And the Indians took the lead again and Chicago came back and tied it. It's oh going to stay goodness, fair. It certainly is. How about that. He tried to get out of the way and hit his bat. It looked like it hit something that spun into fair territory. Well, I watch with this. Whatever this hit, it had some. Kind of, it hit the, the knob of the bat. Is that what it hit? I bet it did. It, it did. Shit. It hit right off the knob of now, the bat. You have you it. seen that? Now that's why it had that spin. It rolled back into fair territory. Unbelievable. Wow. If you're Tyler Flowers right now, you got to be saying. Well, you better thank the lucky stars because if it didn't hit that, it might have hit him in the face. That thing was bearing in. See, that's what I like about you. You're always looking for the silver line. Yeah, I hit it off the knob, but if I didn't hit it off the knob, it would hit me in the face. That's right. I would have been hurt, so I don't mind making it out there. That's <laughs> silver lining. I'd rather be embarrassed than have a nose the size of a yeah, grip. Yeah, no kidding. Right now. That was really strange. So now if you're one of his teammates, you're gonna you're gonna get one of his bats before the game tomorrow and you're gonna tape the bottom of it up with a giant like a rolling spot, tape, right? right? Get, get your sharpie on the bottom and write sweet spot. I like that better. Here's the O2. Got him looking. Beautiful pitch by Shaw. Two down. So now six in a row set down by the Indians bullpen. Boy, right on the outside corner. Good pitch by Brian Shaw. Two outs. Shaw with a second strikeout. Shaw, the sixth Indians pitcher to work in the game here tonight. Adam Eaton tried to hold up, but he went around. Eaton an RBI single and a run scored in the fifth lay down a sacrifice bunt in the seventh inning. Just inside with a heater. Right back to the mound. Shaw has it. He'll flip it the first. And we've got extra innings in Chicago, all tied at six.
Been it all season long. Courtesy of Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. 6-6, six, six, 10th inning. 11th uh, extra inning game for the White Sox. The 15th for the Indians. White Sox are 1-3 and three at home in extra innings. Indians 2-2 two and two on the road. All right, Jake Petrichka, 55th appearance of the year. No wins, three losses, ERA 257. And the Indians will send a pinch hitter up here. As it looks like Mike, Av uh, Mike Avilas will be lifted for Lonnie Chisholm. White Sox have to be the only team the Indians have played this year that do not have a single left-hander in their bullpen. Well, if they did, we would have saw them already. That's just how it's been this year. Lonnie takes it's up high ball one. Chisnell has a pinch hitter four for ten with a home run. One ball one strike. Swung at a ball downstairs in the count one and two. Chisinau went four for nine against the Astros in the series at home over the weekend. Chisinau's also swung the bat well on the road. 296 average and six of his 11 homers have come. On the road. That one's clobbered to right field. Garcia won't get it. It'll one hop the fence. And Lonnie Chisinau flies into second base with a leadoff double. So Chisinau pinch hitting coming off the bench. Crushed that ball into the gap. Yeah. Does it again, the fifth double. It's their first extra base hit since the second inning. That was Brantley's double that drove in a run, and he—you're right. Boy, he went down and hit. He's a good low ball hitter. Garcia was playing him sort of shallow, and that ball just shot by him in the right field. So there's your opportunity, boys. You got your leadoff man aboard. Thirteenth hit, five doubles for the Indians. All right, so here's Zach Walters. Oh, well, make that one for three. He also walked and scored a run in the sixth. Third baseman Gillespie pinching in at the corner, looking for the bunt. Walters pulls it back. Squares pulls it back again. It's low two and oh. There you go. Patience. Swinging away and it's fouled back. That's what happens as you know, you're patient up there, you make that guy get into the zone. Francona decided I'm going to take it off and let him swing the bat now 2 0. See what he does now 2 1. I don't think I saw a sign flashed. Well, then let's go. Green lighting. He squares and bunts it back foul. The only other time we did have a chance to see. Walters bunt was in Cleveland and it wasn't very good. I mean, you know when he tried to do it. You see it there fouled it off. Now he's going to be swinging.
Petrichka's 2 2 ran inside and missed full count. Chris Dickerson waiting on deck. They are pitch. Popped him up left field near the line and it will drop foul. The Wallers will come back and try again. That nearly got inside the chalk. Nobody could get to it. Gillespie with his back to the field. You can see it missed by about a foot or two. Trichka again the 3 2. Oh, that ball's hammered. Deep right field. Garcia will watch it go. Zach Walters with a mammoth two run homer here in the 10th inning. And the Indians take an 8 to 6 lead. Walters' sixth home run since joining the Indians. He has been on a home run binge. Well, there was no doubt about that one. He got all of it. He said they haven't homered yet today. Well, they have now, and it comes at the right time, and that was right down the middle. And he's a low ball hitter. That you can see he just gets the barrel head of the bat short, quick to the baseball. And that's sending some people to the exits. So the Indians take a eight to six lead. And Petrichka, he's done. Well, Petrichka gave up the game winning home run his last time out Sunday. in New York. Now he gives up the go ahead home run here in the 10th. And Zach Walters, his home runs have all been clutch. All six of his home runs. Four have given the Indians the lead. Two have tied the game. This one has the tribe looking good in the 10th. Eight six the Indians lead it thanks to Zach Walters two run homer here in the 10th inning and now Jake Petrichka who did not retire a batter is out Michael Clayto is in. And Chris Dickerson takes up and away ball one. Mike Pockta tells me the Indians with eight extra inning home runs. It's the most in the majors. 
Well, you think about all the walk-off homers they've had in home seven. this year. Yeah. Seven at home, yeah. Well, well, that's right. I don't know how many were in extra innings there. It had to be a few. Now the 2 1, and Dickerson fouls it straight back. Nobody out. Sure wouldn't hurt to add on because no. the White Sox of uh, Ramirez, Abreu, Garcia. Yeah, the Indians trying to win in this ballpark just for the second time this year in their eighth game. Outside, he missed. Three and two to count for Chris Dickerson. And a good pitch by Plato. 98 miles an hour. He blew it right by him. One down. Zach Walters here in the 10th inning on a 3 2 pitch. Blast off. I mean, that that's a long way out there. That's a over the bullpen and halfway up the seats. Yeah. Boy, the timing of it. I'll tell you, he's been he's been un uncanny since coming over here. Boy, just the the opportune times he's hit his home runs. Give him the lead, ties the game. He's been very good. But what better way as a new guy to ingratiate yourself well, you with your can. I know you couldn't pick a, a better solution. <laughs> well, especially for a young manager's player. Managers got to yeah. love him. Yeah. Roberto Perez, like Zach Walters, and even though Tyler Holt had a tough night swinging the bat this evening, those guys have all made contributions. Perez with two hits tonight and an RBI. And sometimes when you lose a veteran and you got to plug in a rookie, managers will tell you the problem is I don't know what to expect. I don't know right. what I can get. I don't know what to count on because you've never seen him play at this level before. But these guys have all stepped in and played key roles. Well, yeah, Walters keeps saying uh, he keeps earning his four at bats a game, that's for sure. And I think Terry Francona, like most managers, would tell you look, he's going to have some games like the Astros, last two games against the Astros, where he'll go over and maybe not look real good. Everybody, does. but that right there. That's why you'll keep writing his name in the lineup. That's easy power Down low two and two Up back out of play. You know, I was thinking, Rick, when you when you watch Carlos Santana swing, and granted, he can get um, a little pull happy at times, but when he swings, he swings hard. Long, yes. And Walters, he just it doesn't look like he really puts a lot of effort into his swing, and the ball just explodes off his yes, back. Yes, it's fun to watch. Now Santana can hit him a long way too. Don't get me wrong, but it's just two different approaches. The two-two. Perez strikes out two down. Top of the order, Michael Bourne.
you saw him obviously at the very very end of his career but Frank Robinson was he a guy that just sort of the ball just jumped off of his bat yeah him uh, Hank Aaron quick wrist those lightning quick wrist for yeah, you never Aaron. saw Hank Aaron fall down when he swung and missed yeah, what a great plus he hit 300 every hands. year yeah, oh yeah his his hands were phenomenal those guys great plate coverage Yaz was a little different you know he would he'd have the big swing born chase one up the ladder and Michael Clato strikes out three in a row but not before Zach Walters goes deep a two run shot gives the Indians the lead. Indians now lead it eight to six. But as I said, the White Sox have their last at bat and they've got their best three hitters coming up. Alexi Ramirez, Jose Abreu. Oh, there's a little surprise too. Yeah. Cody Allen's not in the ball game. Yeah, looking out there, Brian Shaw is staying on as you see Cody or uh, Lonnie Chisinau in the game. And Cody's not up in the bullpen, so obviously he is down for tonight. Yeah. Don't know why. Don't I saw know. him sitting in the bullpen earlier. I don't know if he's still out there. Just staying away from him tonight, giving him an extra day's rest. Yeah. Well, hopefully with yesterday nothing, off. Hopefully there's nothing wrong with him. Curious to say the least. Well, of course, when you just take the lead extra innings, you got a two run lead. It's time for your closer and he's not in there. So there's got to be a reason why. And Shaw's already pitched an inning in the third. To right field. Long run for Dickerson on the move. He makes the catch. One away. Good jump by Dickerson. And Ramirez will head back to the dugout. One away. Well, that's a good thing. You keep that guy off a of base in front of this guy. Jose Abreu doubled and scored in the first, walked in the fourth, grounded out in the fifth, and was intentionally walked in the seventh. And that turned out to be a good idea because the next man, Garcia, grounded out to end the inning. Bart Swain, Indians Media Relations Director, says Cody Allen did make 71 pitches in three straight days. So sounds like just a Chance to give him a couple of days off in a row. As okay. you said, Rick, with the day off yesterday. And they probably just uh, trying to stay away from him again. He doesn't look happy about it, but that's the uh, that's the competitor that he is. Look at that. 91 over the week. Yeah, okay, the, there you go. The 28-15. Yeah. Yeah. Abreu swinging a miss. 
and Brian Shaw gets the one and two. Brian Shaw is no stranger to hard work either. He and Cody Allen, along with Mark Zipchinski, these guys have logged a ton of appearances. A lot of big outs this year. And the Atch is no, he's right he's up there. He's sneaking up him. behind him, isn't he? He may not have the number of appearances, but uh, he middle part of the ball game comes in for some really big outs as well. Well, Atch and uh, in Zipper, Zipchinski, they both have 58 appearances. Okay. Shaw's at 65, and then Cody's right behind him at 62. So yeah, those those four have been iron men. And Shaw really and they're gonna have to continue to be. So that's yeah. why you gotta pick and choose your spots. That's why Francona's given an extra day off, man. They'll be ready to go, rock and roll, and let Shaw get it done. He's gonna get the first two out. And with two down. Avi Sayil Garcia will be the batter. And again, I know you can't etch it in stone, but maybe in the back of Terry Francona's mind is with Corey Kluber going tomorrow, maybe I won't need a lot of the bullpen. And yeah. So I can give a lot of these guys a day tomorrow. I didn't even think about that, to be honest with you, but that's not a bad point. Yeah, you got four and two thirds of your starter house tonight. Breaking ball in there for a strike. He's been like uh, as solid as you can be. Almost a solid seven every time he goes out there. Let's hope that holds true tomorrow. Well, I'll say this, and I know you agree. I, I just look we cover him and it may it may sound like, well, of course you're gonna say that. You're you're covering these guys every day, but Terry Francona and Mickey Calloway deserves a lot of credit too. They've handled this pitching staff, top to bottom, masterfully this year. It's not easy to do when you've got some guys who are going for career highs and games pitched, and multiple guys doing that. Well, we can start getting into it at some point in time. We will. When you think about it, they had three starters in their first five, the first month of the season that didn't have a win. Yeah. One of them was Justin Masterson, and he's no longer even with your staff. Shaw strikes out Garcia to end the game, and the Indians bullpen with another terrific performance here tonight. As they finish things off, Shaw closes it down for Cleveland. He gets the win, and the Indians emerge with an 8-6 victory over the White Sox here this evening. The Indians go to 67-63. As they push themselves now four games over the 500 mark. And the White Sox drop to 59 and 72. So only the second time this year the Indians have been able to shake hands at the end of a game in the city of Chicago. This is a big one though because yeah. this baby could have very easily gone the other way. Zach Walters though sends everybody home happy on the Cleveland side as they're, <laughs> they're giving them the business now too. So time for our key play of the game brought to you by Key Bank. Well, I like it. The offense comes out today. They score eight runs. They end up winning the game. And in the 10th inning, Zach Walters, a guy that has hit some big home runs in his short time here, does it again, man. A two-run home.